Welcome to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, brought to us by Konami and Ultra. TMNT was the first licensed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game to be released, and it was released during the third season of the animated series in 1989. And while the game is based on the cartoon, it does feature an art style and enemies from the comic books. The game came out for the NES and many home computer systems at the time, with the NES version selling over 4 million copies, making it one of the highest selling third party titles for the NES. While being noted for its steep difficulty, overall TMNT with its ability to play as all four turtles at any given time, and a different approach besides just a typical beat em up that many of the other turtles games were, TMNT for NES is definitely a pretty cool title. So here we go with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES. When we start the game, we get a little bit of a story cutscene, showing all four turtles evolving from their normal turtle form, showing each of the characters their names and what weapon they have equipped. After pressing start in the main menu, you're jumped right onto one of the main maps of the game. The game is played from two perspectives, a top map-like view like this, and then the more action-oriented sequences. This reminds me very much of The Legend of Zelda 2. At any point you can pause the game and change what turtle you're currently playing as, and I'll do a pretty good job of switching up the turtles throughout the game. Each turtle has a different weapon of course, and thus a different range of attack. Not long into the first level, we run into our first boss, Bebop, of the, of course the team of Bebop and Rocksteady, who's currently holding April hostage in the upper right corner. Overall, you want to kind of run away from him at times, slashing, sometimes being able to hit him even though he's behind you, and just getting close enough that when he does a quick turnaround to run at you, you're able to run around and yourself and get away from him. Right after that first sewer area, there's a building here, and I don't want to explore it, but I did want to show that, yes, there is a pizza located in the upper left, which gets you a full amount of health bar back, but the problem with it is, you're going to probably lose more health than it's worth trying to go through. One of the biggest gripes about the game is not just the enemies, but the fact that they consistently respawn. They can also change at random. For example, each area has two sets of enemies to battle with. And, at some points, they will randomly change, even while you're in the middle of an area. I'm not gonna pretend to try to know all the names of the different enemies that we will be battling. There's basically the normal enemies you're contending with as you move, and then all of a sudden, sometimes the screen will stop, and you'll have to battle a mini-boss. The mini-bosses do not appear until all other normal enemies are taken care of, in which case, he'll then show up, and you'll see that he has a special health bar. Raphael is probably the worst turtle to play as in the game, even though he's my personal favorite. His range of attack is the most limited of all four of the turtles, and most people end up using him, as well as Michelangelo, more as kind of bait or fodder to take damage, while using Leo and mainly Donatello as their main turtle. For Rocksteady, what you want to do is attack him and then quickly run away and avoid him as he jumps towards you. Sometimes he'll stop in place and fire bullets at you, which are pretty easy to dodge. There's of course the trick that you can stand on the upper right box and use Donatello to attack downwards, getting Rocksteady caught in an infinite loop, hitting him over and over again. Once he's taken care of though, you have saved April O'Neil and you move on to level 2, the Dam. Now this is an area where most gamers as kids got stuck for the first time. Not mainly in this area, but the area following this. When we start off the area, we're going to start off as Michelangelo, showcasing once again that he has a pretty limited range, but not quite as limited as Raphael. Over here we have to take out all the normal enemies, and then we find another one of the chainsaw guys, who if you're with quick combo, you can keep hitting him over and over again before he's able to get an attack off. Once he's defeated, climb up the ladder, and you're lucky because there's half a pizza located at the top of this ladder. So we're going to select Raphael, who took a pretty good amount of damage in the previous level, and refill his health bar. The enemies in the game will take multiple hits, and even though Donatello has the longest range of a weapon, it also seems sometimes to be the most powerful weapon. He really has an OP-type feeling to him. 
Over here, we have to take on another chainsaw guy, and then one of these guys appear, who can only be attacked when he's standing up looking at you. Sometimes when walking towards you, he'll just stop and duck back down, you won't be able to hurt him. And other times he'll fire a big wave out at you, in which case you'll have to dodge it or, of course, take the hit. After he's done, we move up to the top floor area of this building. If you want to go all the way to the right, you can fight another side boss as well as get some more health, but we're just going to climb up the ladder and continue our way over to the left now. The hardest part about this area, though, is making this jump. You have to do a little short jump. Don't hold in the jump button, but just lightly tap it, and you'll be able to make it over the gap. One of the other big gripes about TMNT is the fact that the jumping can be a little bit awkward. It'll take some practice, but once you get used to it, you'll be able to get over the harder jumps. Then, we jump inside the dam itself. Here we must disable bombs. You must do so within the time limit, as you can see flashing below your current health bar. There's electrical currents as well as electrical algae. The algae comes in two forms, the spaghetti-like form and then the more ragged leaf-like form. The leaf-like form will cause an electric shock damaging you, while the spaghetti-like form will actually grab you and pull you in, killing you instantly. So you want to avoid it at all costs. The path I'm following is pretty much the best and quickest path to make sure that you hit all the bombs. Even if you make it to the end of the area and you didn't hit all the bombs, you won't complete the stage. So you want to make sure that you don't miss any of the bombs while traveling through. This is definitely one of the more tough aspects of the entire game. Being able to get used to the swimming is what makes this so difficult. Your turtle is definitely heavy while underwater and consistently sinks. Having to mash the swim button in order to move quickly, you have to get used to this. Practicing on your first couple of times through will definitely help you out. One of the worst parts of the entire area, though, is here. You'll have all this electrical seaweed around you, and you'll have to swim in between it, trying to do your best not to take too much damage. If you see one turtle taking a lot, of course you want to switch out. If you lose a life during this part, you'll have to go back to the very beginning of the underwater area. If for some reason the time limit does run up on you, the game is over and you'll have to start over again from the beginning. If you lose a turtle throughout the game, they're no longer selectable, though there are a few opportunities throughout to find these turtles that have now been captured and rescue them and get them back into your party. This area right here is a little bit of a tight squeeze to try to get through without getting hit by the electrical current, but thankfully once you grab the bomb, you can sink downwards and go left here. Thankfully, we're almost to the final bomb, just have to watch out for some more electrical seaweed as well as the stuff that can grab you and instant kill you. You have to get really close to the stuff though for it to be able to come up and grab you. Once you hit the final bomb, as long as you hit them all, you'll complete the stage and move on to level number 3. After finding out that Splinter has been kidnapped, our goal for level 3 is to find them, and level 3 is quite a big area to explore. As you can see just from the mini-map, there's a ton of buildings and a ton of things to do. However, we're only going to be focusing on two of them. We first start off by driving the turtle van over to this location, going inside this building. For the first time in the game, I'm going to be using Donatello, and you can just see how massive the bow is that he uses, and can really take out enemies. There's some health in the upper right corner that will only, unfortunately, bring back one piece of your health, but I guess it's better than nothing. Pretty much every level in the game introduces new enemies, like for example these guys, that when you hit them, their head pops off and you have to destroy that as well. 
You also have the balloons that fly and drop bombs on you. And the other set of enemies for this level is these weird moth-like guys and the flame guys who shoot out constant little jumping flames that you have to get rid of. Over here to the right is a pretty tricky jump as well. You'll have to time your jump just right with a light press in order to get over. But your reward for doing so is a full pizza. Climb all the way to the top part now, watching out for any enemies, and like I said before, the enemies can change. See before, there was a flame guy. All of a sudden, it's now one of those guys that have a detachable head. Either way, you want to walk over the gap, not jump, and pick up the missiles in the upper left. Now, you actually can glitch the game a little bit and jump straight from the ground up to that missile location, but it's rather difficult to do. You need the missiles in this level in order to destroy barricades to help you get the turtle van through other parts of the big city. The unfortunate thing is after grabbing the missiles, you do have to walk all the way back through the building and get back outside. Once you're out here, you get back into the turtle van, and now you can see you have a missile count of 10 in the lower left corner. You have two types of fire in the van. You can either fire just straight bullets to destroy the tanks, which I forgot to mention will actually instantly kill a turtle if they run over them while they're outside of the van or just walking around like they were in the first level. But you can destroy these tanks with the regular bullets, so you don't have to waste missiles on them if you don't want to. Following the path that I take, you'll be able to use the least amount of missiles and be able to make it to the final building without having to stop and pick up more missiles. Thankfully though, 10 is plenty in order to get to that final building that we're going to be exploring. When you make it here, go down, do not go up and destroy the other barriers, and instead work your way around this area. There's going to be two more barriers above us, do not destroy those either, as they will take of course two missiles to destroy, and we don't have to explore that place. Thankfully, the regular foot soldiers that are just kind of running around on the main map can either be run over or shot simply with bullets in order to get rid of them. Over here, you see that we only have a few more missiles left, but we've destroyed all the barriers that we needed to in order to make it to this building. Destroy this final tank and then pull up to this building, get out, and go inside. Once inside here, you'll have more of the same enemies we dealt with in that previous little area work your way through and down the ladder on the far right side. When you're able to make it to the far side of the room, you want to head down the ladder. Once down here, you want to be sure not to land in any of the water here. You'll be taken out of the area and have to go all the way back through. Most of these jumps aren't too bad. The problem is the one here where you'll have to do a really short jump. You also have to be very careful of the balloons flying overhead. This jump right here as well can be very tricky. Be sure to grab the pizza though and refill some of the health you may have lost up to this point. I like to use Donatello though for most of these jumps because the weapon is so big it can hit most of the enemies around. They also are gracious enough to give us another pizza right at the end of the area. Once back out of the sewer you want to head inside the next building. You can actually take out this guy if you want to from the opposite side of the wall, but heck, I'm just going to run right through. One of the things I haven't really mentioned in the game is the side weapons. For example, the shurikens I have right now. There's a couple of these side weapons in the game, and they stick to whatever turtle picks them up. So if you switch to Raphael right now, he won't have the shurikens that we picked up. While the shurikens only fire one at a time, you can also pick up a three-shot version of them, as well as a scroll weapon, which is pretty much the best of the side weapons, as well as a boomerang, which, well, functions like a boomerang. There's also a few other weapons and items that we've picked up, like the missiles so far, there's also ropes, and the other thing we haven't seen so far really is the Mr. Invincibility, which is only in three spots in the game, but I will be grabbing at least one of them throughout the run. The boss for level number 3 is, well, actually two bosses as one. The first is Mecha Turtle. I'm going to be using Raphael on him, which is not the smart move to do, but it makes the game a little bit more challenging. Trying to deliver hits to him and then immediately running away or jumping straight up into the air to avoid his sword hits. You then have a battle against this guy here. He has a little bit more speed to him and has a couple more moves, like the missiles which will chase you around. Thankfully, the missiles move so slowly that you're able to do a pretty big arcing jump over them. 
He also fires bullets at you directly if he's in front of you, but these are pretty easy to avoid as well. The major problem is actually running into him while he's moving all around. After taking out his health bar there, you save Splinter, and now it's time to move on to level 4. Level number 4 is the airport, and just like level 3, it's a pretty large map. There's an easy way though for the most part to navigate it. Basically, each of the buildings or sewer holes you're going to be entering are numbered, and you can see the number right next to the entrance that you come into. And in the level, you always want to be going to a higher numbered area. There are a few instances where there's going to be a couple of areas to choose from, with a couple of them having different numbers, and you want to go to the one with the highest number. Following this pattern and strategy, you'll eventually be able to make it to the end of level 3. One of the other big things you'll have to do in 3 is, well, the ropes, and you can grab the ropes for the first time here, watching out for these boomerang guys. They like to jump in place a lot, and you can just kind of mash the attack button over and over again in order to get rid of them. Pick up the ropes located up here, and as you can see, the enemies for this level, at least at the beginning, are the same ones we dealt with in the first level of the game. After a couple more flying guys, you'll eventually make it to this large metal structure. When you walk up close to it, the screen will scroll by and you'll use the rope to get across. Just repeat this for three times in a row and you'll make it to the opposite side. Following the path that we're going to take, you're not going to need any more ropes, so you don't have to worry about that. Be sure to grab the pizza in the upper right corner here before heading down the ladder. Down here, there's more enemies, including robots that are firing lasers, and any time in the game where you have three or four enemies or more on screen, it will slow down. So you'll have to be extra careful during these areas that the enemies don't gang up on you. You can outrun the first boomerang guy in this room and then jump up here and take out another one before going through the door at the end. Now, once outside of here, you're going to walk around the building and you'll find a manhole. You want to go inside here and you'll notice that, well, the number 2 is written here and we're going to be continuing to go through this area. Introduced here, though, are the laser turret light things. These fire lasers that go between one another. You can destroy them, though, with a simple hit. Down the ladder, you'll have to battle a mini-boss, in this case, a boomerang guy, before you're able to climb up the ladder. At this point, though, he's not too much of a threat to us. Continue on, jumping in between the laser guns that are firing, as well as more boomerang guys. One of the best strategies I've always found in the game is avoid as much combat as possible, since with multiple enemies on screen and them consistently coming back, you're just going to be in an endless cycle, usually losing more health than actually being able to save. Here we travel through a small area, be careful not to fall down through the conveyor belts, and you can see that we were in number 3. Outside here, walk all the way around, and now we're at the number 6. Here there's more conveyor belts to deal with. This area is definitely pretty tough with some spikes as well as the other lasers going on. At the end, be careful the laser right before the ladder and then climb it up. After popping out of that sewer, walk all the way around and enter the next one around the bend. This one's a pretty short one, just a couple of conveyor belts as well as a few other enemies. Outside here, you'll have a couple of choices, but you want to skip the first one that you see and go to the one above. Simple little boss fight here against one of those boomerang throwing guys, but once he's done, just climb up the ladder. And yep, you can't go through the area and go up the ladder until that guy is taken care of. Here you have a pretty big area. Be careful because planes will sometimes fly overhead and drop bombs on the turtles. Seems a little obsessive, but I guess Shredder will go at any means to get rid of the turtles. At the very end of the runway, though, go up just slightly and you'll find another manhole. Down here, well, it's just an empty area. No sub-boss, though it feels like an area they should have put one. 
once back outside, walk around, and go into the next manhole you see. Here, you're going to see giant magnets that pull you towards them, so you have to be very careful when making your jumps. Also located in here are the scroll sub-weapons. These sub-weapons don't drop from enemies, and you can only pick them up when you find them. Though honestly, they're not going to be worth picking up here, with the case of accidentally falling into the fire, which would be an instant death. Right outside here, we have some more laser turrets as well as the conveyor belt. I'm going to take the upper path here in order to ride across because, well, taking the lower path, I'm going to end up landing in some spikes. I'm a little bit low on health, but if I can maintain my health, I can get a pizza that's located here. Be careful though, sometimes the pizza glitches out with so many enemies on screen and you won't be able to see that it's actually there. Be very careful of the fire down located here before going up the conveyor belt. One thing that I always found funny is as a kid I would use Game Genie codes for infinite health to try to beat the game. And if you do that and land in the fire, you're permanently stuck, because even the instant deaths won't kill you, but your turtle gets frozen. With the power of the three shuriken throwing item, I can take out a good amount of enemies with them. They're one of the better sub-weapons, definitely. Even the regular shurikens will help you out in a pinch, especially in the final level of the game. Now this area is the toughest area probably to get through on your very first attempt. You have to stop while walking to get down these narrow holes. The first area, there's no enemies or anything, but the second and third, there's a giant spike wall coming. So walk to the edge, let go of your controller, and hope that you can get through all the holes each time. There's a pizza in the lower right here, it's impossible to get, so just ignore it and get down the hole. If you're able to get through that, that's definitely the trickiest instant deaths available in the game. Going through the last door though will take you to the giant Mauser boss. Now there is a glitch with the Mauser boss I won't be doing here. If you actually pause the game while the mouth is closing, you can actually keep the ball that's inside his mouth exposed permanently and keep doing damage to him. Donatello is of course also the easiest turtle to beat this guy with because of the long range, but I'm going to mix it up and use Mike and Raph. He'll drop Mausers from his mouth as you see, which are instantly kill with one hit, and also fire lasers from his giant eyes. Just be careful of the lasers as they like to either go straight down at you depending upon where you're standing or go in a diagonal direction towards you. Once you deliver enough hits though, you can move on to the next level of the game. Let me just say that this area is extremely annoying. There are a bunch of little manholes to go down, but only one is correct, and it's randomly chosen each time you play the game. I'll be getting it on my first try. However, this is after many attempts to finally get it to appear where I want it. Basically, you have these tunnels underground with extremely difficult enemies. Your goal is to get to the end of it, and there's a door with a Foot Clan soldier logo above it. Going through it will either go to an empty room or go to the Technodrome boss. If you don't find the Technodrome there, there's no instant way to get out without losing a life, so you're going to have to backtrack and travel all the way back through this area. Since we're so close to the end of the game, you definitely don't want to lose a turtle. So, getting it on your first try is pretty much a must. There's no real strategy though for most of these enemies, as you can see you have spider-like guys, you have weird hedgehog-like guys that bounce all around, and even jellyfish that shoot off and explode in a four-shot spread shot. Here though, I'm able to find the Techno Drone. Also on the main map, I didn't mention there are helicopters chasing you with spotlights. If they see you, a foot soldier will come out and you'll have to battle him as well. For the Techno Drone battle, it starts charging you with a giant electrical field. One of the best strategies, though, for this is to avoid all the Foot Clan that you can and get up really close and duck down. When you stand up, if you do it just right, you can get through without getting hit from the electrical field, or else you're going to have to wait for the electricity to finally stop so you can get through. Either way, once you're on, I highly recommend taking out the two cannons. 
Trying to take out the giant eye above while the two cannons are still firing is very tricky. Once they're done, or you've at least taken one out, start focusing on the giant eye. While it's open, you can hit it. Of course, you can usually get in one or two hits per time it opens the eye. Just stay on the conveyor belt, and try to get the foot soldier stuck. This is pretty key to the fight, because getting him stuck it will cause the Technodrome not being able to put out any more. With the two cannons done, this battle becomes extremely easy, but getting it to this point and getting it on a consistent basis is what makes this battle so difficult. It'll be a slow, drawn-out process to deliver all those hits, but once you're finally able to do so, you're going to move on to the final level of the game. Inside the Technodrone is a giant maze with extremely tough enemies, even tougher enemies than we dealt with in the previous level looking for the Technodrone. You start off in the room with a lot of foot soldiers, immediately firing shurikens every way you go. Hopefully you have at least a few turtles with close to full health going in, though I know that's difficult. One of the most annoying enemies is the jetpack guys with lasers. For the most part, in a big open room, run underneath of them and just keep moving and running past them. There's also these helicopter guys, which can be destroyed instantly with a shuriken. However, I recommend saving them if you do have them for a little bit later on. If you don't have them and have to hit them directly, you'll have to do multiple hits to them. Being able to hit them twice and dodge them is very difficult. These hopping robots, you can get kind of stuck in a pattern. While you can stand a little bit away from them and still hit them while their tail tries to hit at you, or you can just mash the attack button and get them stuck in a permanent loop. Either way, I recommend taking out both of them before trying to make the jump up to the top layer. While there are a few branching paths and a few dead ends throughout the Technodrone, the path I'm taking will get you there pretty much the quickest. Watch out for the boomerang guy throwing him from the right side as you drop down. Then when you do drop down, take out the two before of course trying to get into the open area. You're going to have cannons and other things trying to fire at you, but you want to drop down the first big pit that you come to. Once you land here, you want to keep walking over now to the right. Watch out for the cannon, and then drop down the next big pit. As soon as you land, there will be some more boomerang guys and cannons. Try to take out the guy through the wall. You can, of course, use Donatello or Leonardo to help you with this, and then go through the small opening. Thankfully, there's a pizza here, which is the reason why we were coming here. If you don't need the pizza, you can ignore this part, and instead, when you land it in this room, go to the left side. And as you can see, since the enemies can gang up on you, they can take away most of the health, if not all of the health, we just previous regained just a few seconds ago. Once down here, you want to head over to the left. There is another pizza there located above you, but it's a little bit more of a pain to get to. Drop down here and then immediately duck, watching out for the helicopter guys. As you walk forward, the jetpack guys show up, so just keep walking and ducking just slightly for a second to let them hover over you. Here, we grab Mr. Invincibility. The item with the turtle's face on it, well, it turns you into a rotating ball of death. Nothing can hurt you and everything dies in one hit. Just roll as quickly as you can through the next room, taking out any enemy that may cross your path. One of the coolest things about the game, and like I said, unfortunately, there's only three of them to find throughout, and this is the only one in our direct path. This area is ridiculously tough. This is why I kept the shurikens up to this point and kept them on multiple turtles. You want to walk through and use them to take out the little helicopter guys, throwing two of them when you can in order to take out the jetpack guys. I recommend taking out any jetpack guy that may appear on the left side, and then, once you're in the very small corridor, focus on each enemy at one at a time, taking out one of the helicopter guys, walk a few steps, and then a jetpack guy. This will take you a while to get through this area, but it will be able to conserve your health. And we're getting close to the end here, so we want to have as much health as we possibly can. 
Once you're finally able to get through, there will be a few more helicopter guys, and then you can climb the ladder, and it's time for, well, the only mini-boss of the Technodrone level. Yep, the mini-boss is, well, one of those jetpack guys. Throw two shurikens at him, and he's done. And now it's time for the final boss battle of the game, Shredder. There's a few ways to deal with Shredder. The easiest way will, of course, be using Donatello, getting him in a permanent loop. However, for the fun of it, I'm gonna pick Raph and show how easy it can be. First, I attack him by doing short jumps up to the top platform, and once he falls, get him in the corner. Run in, attack, then back away just slightly, then run in again and attack. Timing this right each time, he just gets in a permanent frozen loop, and he's unable to attack me. Once he's done, though, you can sit back and enjoy the ending, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES. I think one of the weirdest things about the ending, at least in most people's opinion, is the fact that you actually somehow turn Splinter back into human form just by beating Shredder. Regardless of the ending, I feel that TMNT gets a bum rap. Yes, it has steep difficulty, it's a little bit weird at times, and being as a kid really, really wanting a Ninja Turtles video game, the creators of this game did a decent job, at least representing a bunch of the characters, while the enemies are a little bit iffy, showcasing all the turtles with all their correct weapons, the color schemes, as well as being able to play as all four turtles. And while the game wasn't perfect, and it did have some tough difficulty, we kept playing it due to our love for the Ninja Turtles. Either way, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.